Hey y'all, I'm Brittany and today we are unboxing the latest from the Wizarding Trunk. Welcome back to my channel. I'm back on camera with another unboxing and this time we are unboxing the Wizarding Trunks Owlery, which is their bi-monthly subscription box. And to be completely honest, at time of recording, I have no idea what this theme is. I'm usually pretty good about keeping up with the theme for every box that we're gonna get, but for some reason, I just, I'm blanking out on it. So obviously once this video uploads, y'all know, I will know, but right now, literally have no idea. I really do love the Wizarding Trunk. I think they're like hands down the best subscription box out there. And I have always been impressed with everything that they've provided. Like even now, this box isn't actually their branded box. They've had like some kind of issue with their manufacturer. Either they just weren't able to produce or they just couldn't get it out in time. But what I appreciate that Wizarding Trunk did was one, they communicated that with their customers, but then two, they went ahead and sent the box and just slapped on their Allery sticker on it. That way you still know where it's coming from. You still know that it's the bi-monthly, but they still got their shipment out there. I'm not throwing shade at other subscription boxes, but I am. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get the cheeky sneak peek. Ooh. We have right here, Wittershins Joke Shop, but the ad is Spy Spectrospects reveals invisible magic pests. So that's like the first little paper product that we have here. Love the color behind it. It's very on brand for like Fred and George's Joke Shop. If we get our very own Spectrospects in here, I'm gonna lose it. Lose it, I say. And as I speak, we have our own Spectrospects. How freaking awesome is that? And they are purple instead of the Luna Lovegood pink Spectra Specs that we have, but we still have the pink and blue lens. How amazing is that? And we've got the swirl details with the stars, the different colors, the blues, the pinks, the purples. <gasps> this is so cool. Ah, this is fantastic. Oh my gosh, if we could actually like use these for like real sunglasses, hands down would do it if I didn't have prescribed sunglasses. This is super, super cool. Like I'm blind, so I can't like really see myself all that well, but like this looks really neat. And I know, I know I have the Spectra Specs here somewhere on my shelf, but like this is just a great new fun variation of the Spectra Specs. We have our own version of Birdie Bot's Every Flavor Beans. These are called Jumping Jelly Beans and this is an actual product. Like it's actual like real candy in here. And I say that because there's nutrition facts on the back. This is so cool. Oh, that's smart. Okay, so they did provide like actual jelly beans in here, but then they also have like an insert that kind of fills up the rest of the box, but it still looks like you have jelly beans inside. So once you're actually done with the jelly beans, oh my gosh, this is a bad idea. Once the jelly beans are actually out of the package, you still have this insert inside with printed jelly beans on there. So it looks like this is an actual product. It's an actual product that you could just pull off the shelf and eat. <laughs> Very smart. This is so well executed, like something so small a very big idea, very well thought out of. I, I'm, I'm super impressed with this. And let's go ahead and try one of the jelly beans. Mm -hmm. Good jelly bean. And in case I failed to mention this, this is from Ballywicks, Baileywicks? Baileywicks, sweet shop. So instead of Honeydukes, we have Baileywicks. So it looks like we have four prints. We've got three boxes. I know that of course this is the book cover. The first item I'm pulling is the Beasteriums, the Beasteriums Rat Tonic. So it's intended use for use on minor rashes, cuts, and abrasions, a product of alchemy for the skin. Ingredients include aloe e, 
and orange blossom oil. Now this is this is nice. I've noticed in the last couple of boxes from Wizarding Trunk, we haven't had anything from Alchemy for the Skin. And a lot of people, I guess, are not into, you know, like bath beauty kind of things. And, and I understand, I get that. But like, I still, I still enjoy these little things just because of the fact that they can make for a good prop for like your potions shelf. But this is, this is kind of cool. This is kind of fun. I like the design on the label. It actually looks like something you would see at your menagerie shop to pick up for, for your rat. Oh yeah, it's really nice. And I believe it's a postcard, yeah it is. It's a postcard with Magical Pets artwork on the front. So we have what appears to be Crookshanks, Trevor, probably a Scabbers, a Hedwig, and we have what looks to be Buckbeak. And the little text on here says, for the slime lovers, you can get Trevor. What about a 10 foot snake? Mm, check no in that box. I'm a Slytherin, but like, no. <laughs> and then underneath Buckbeak, it says hippogriffs. It says warning, hippogriffs are not indoor pets. Buy with caution. But like I said, it's also a postcard on the back, so you can actually use it to send it as a postcard, or you can just keep it in a scrapbook like what I do. All my art prints and such that I get from subscription boxes go into a scrapbook until I find like frames or something that I want to, you know, create a gallery wall with. All right, let's go for one of these boxes here. We're gonna go for the little one. Little one's kind of heavy, so I'm wondering if maybe this is like, a potion. Ooh. Oh, yes. I'm here for it. I'm here for it. That's a great play on words. So we do have a potion here. It's in a heart shape, but it's not Amortensia. It is Amor et Eternum. So it's Latin for eternal love. Let's check out this label here in the shape of a heart. We've got some yellows some pinks. We have a woman on the front. We've got Amor Eternium as the label of this potion and it on the back we have another label <laughs> in the shape of a mouth and it says beautifully bewitched love and beauty potions and at the top we've got a pink cording wrapping around the neck but we also have a pink wax seal heart stamp which is very intricately designed Let's see we've got some beautiful swirl effect in the potion which always gives off that magical quality that I think we all look to have in just our collection. I think this is very well put together with the, like the labels, the name of the potion, the color of the potion, and just the whole detail. I think it's, it's really, really well done. I'm never disappointed with Wizarding Trunks potions. All right, let's take a look at another art piece. And it looks like it's part of Diagon Alley. It's actually a really large art piece. Like this is really cool. So it looks like we've got some shops here. The first one says Flora and Granum. The next one to that is Clean Sweeps. And the one next to that is Besterium. Besterium? Besterium? Besterium. I think that might be a misspell because I think on the rat tonic, wherever I put that, it said Besterium. Um, but this is just a really lovely art piece to show off like what would be a Diagon Alley inspired sort of area. But this is really cool. This is really, really nice. Now the next item we're gonna look at is a key. Now Wizarding Trunk has been providing keychains in the form of keys to all of us. And this one, I think they just nailed it, like 100% nailed it. Now that I'm talking about this, this isn't just Wittershins. It, it's magical shops. It just dawned on me what this whole box is themed around. Magical shops. Duh. <laughs> How late am I to the game about this? Sorry, y'all. Sorry. So I'm going to show you what it is. And it is your very own key to your Wizarding Bank vault. So we have the letter G in a very ornate surrounding. But if you look right here at the bottom, there's actually a dragon head. And as we all know, the high security vaults are protected by a dragon. And at the bottom with the teeth, 
I'm not entirely sure if this is supposed to represent anything. Maybe it's like the maze to get into the underground of the bank. I'm not entirely sure, but this is just super cool looking. And finally, we also have a little tag on here that says Vault 688. Now, if you're a true Potterhead, you will know that Harry's vault is vault number 687. My vault is right next to Harry's. How cool is that? <laughs> yeah, this, this key is very well done. Like, probably one of my favorite keys that Wizarding Trunk has ever done. Just the simplicity behind it and the size of the key is far more believable in the sense of, you know, how you could use it. So yeah, Wizarding Trunk, y'all, y'all nailed it with this one. This is probably one of my favorite products. All right, next we're gonna open one of the boxes. This is one of the larger boxes, not really too heavy. All right, so what we have is a figuring of the stacked cauldrons. This is super iconic and Diagon Alley as we follow Harry exploring this new environment. But this is like a mini version of that stacked cauldron. I'm not crazy about the color choice of this. I feel like with the blue, I don't know, it's just like, it's not quite fitting with the the Wizarding World, the like copper or the bronze type color. Um, it would have been kind of cool if they, if like each cauldron was like a different color. So that's cool. I mean, I like how kind of like antique it looks. I'm just not crazy with the blue. The blue does not resonate with me. So the next paper product we're gonna look at is Ezekiel's Quality Wands. It looks to be like a catalog and I really, really love the artwork on here. It's kind of giving me uh, Crimes of Grindelwald vibes, that book cover that we, we've we seen. I really just love this, this style of, that was chosen for this catalog. I love the colors, we've got the golds and the purple. And on the back here, it says exceptional wands made with only the finest quality woods and superior cores since 1756. So the first one that we have here is 10 inches, elderberry and gold thread. Very interesting. I guess it's this, this illustration right here. And it's very interestingly designed with the hole in the center. Now my friend Amber of all of Amber's wands absolutely loves learning anything and everything about wand lore. And so I think this would be a, like a fun piece to give to her, uh, just because I know she really enjoys looking at like the woods, you know, the meaning behind it and how the wand core can, you know, correlate with the person and their personality. It's it's really interesting stuff. So if y'all want to learn more about wand lore, go over to all of Amber's wands. I'll leave a link in the description box down below. I'm just going to leave a screenshot up here for you all to pause the video and check out what each page has to say. All right, so now we're gonna take a look at the pin. We always get a pin in the subscription box here. So whatever it is, is to clasp. And of course we always have a backing card that says the Wizarding Trunk exclusive. And I'm going to let y'all see what the pin is first. Ooh, M&M Worldly Wizarding Wears. That is very cool. So this pin kind of gives me invisibility cloak vibes with the moon and the stars and different things like that. But it's very well done, it's a nice piece. Um, it's a nice piece. I'm not sure I would actually put that on my pin board um, just because I kind of have like a theme going already or several themes going already on my pin board back here. I do like that they did include the wizarding robe shop because that's obviously in the books the first time that Harry meets Draco Malfoy and pretty much determines real fast. Harry doesn't like Draco at all. So yeah, this is just a really nice pin. Probably not my favorite, but it's still very nicely done. All right, and the last paper replica we're gonna actually look at is the continued series from Magical Creatures A to Z. The pages that we received this time deal with familiars. Um, now, I'm not entirely sure what familiars are, but let's find out together. 
So it says familiars are supernatural beings who have served witches and wizards for hundreds of years. Although they are spirits, these beings manifest in the human world as tangible, clearly defined animals. Familiars typically take the form of cats, rats, toads, owls, or snakes, but can manifest as any animal. They are useful in many ways, such as identifying curses and hexes, assisting with divination, locating lost objects, delivering messages, or even spying. All right, and on the back of the page, we've got information about the flesh-eating slugs, which we obviously know in book two that Hagrid had to go to Nocturne Alley to find the flesh-eating slug repellent because it was ruining all of the school cabbages. Yep, yep. So I'm gonna leave a screenshot on here for you to check out more information on familiars and flesh-eating slugs. I think in the next quarterly box, we're actually going to be receiving the keepsake to what these torn pages uh, already be kept in. I'm very curious to see what that is, if it's gonna actually be like a book and you, you know, just, you know, place them in sleeves or something. I'm not sure, I have no idea what's in store for that, but I'm really excited to see just the direction that they're going with that. Cause I do like the idea that we've got these torn pages out of Magical Creatures A to Z, which is a book cover that was designed by Danny from Wizardry Workshop. Okay, I don't think I myself have ever received a journal from the Wizarding Trunk. I know other subscription boxes have offered that, but this, I'm actually blown away just by how cool it looks. So this is called the Scriptorium Quality Quills and Impeccable Inks. That is a really neat design. And yes, there is gold foiling on here, but it's on top of like this brown kind of aged leather type texture, which really is not not leather at all. It's just like a print, but yeah, it's really cool looking. And then on the back we've got, as I said, Danny's runes that he always puts on. And even on the spine, we've got information about what this is. So let's check on the inside. Love the marbled pages on the inside. But yeah, it's a journal. It's a journal that looks like it's got parchment on here. They're lined and then on the back, it's a blank page. So you can do what you will with it. And we also have a little ribbon bookmark, which is lovely. So you can keep track of what you're doing. So let's open the last box that we have here. All right, this took a little bit to put on. I think maybe the kind of straw that goes inside the bottle is just a tad bit too long because this was not screwing on the top, but I don't know, maybe it's just me. But this is actually a really neat idea. So it is like a hand soap dispenser bottle. I love the kind of chalky sort of paint job that's on here. And then the front says it's from Pure Blood Apothecary and it's all purpose magical mess remover hand soap. So put whatever hand soap you like to use. That way you just have a magical touch every time you wash your hands. <laughs> all right, last but not least is the book cover. So let's take a look at what is on this book cover. Oh my God, I, okay. I figured they had to do a flourish and blots like something or other. And it's only appropriate that it's a book cover, duh. But check this out y'all. It's like supposed to be a Gilderoy Lockhart inspired type book. I'm assuming I haven't really looked it over thoroughly, but oh my God, this is fantastic. First of all, the end pages like look great with the marble design. I always love the marble pages. So this is called Dwelling with Dragons. But could this be the owner of the wizarding trunk here on the cover? He definitely is giving off like Gilderoy vibes. Like one of his teeth is just like, ping, like it's just sparkle, sparkle. <laughs> On the back it says, everyone's favorite wizard extraordinaire is back yet again to enchant and dazzle us with his latest account of heroic adventures alongside the most dangerous creatures on earth. An instant bewitching bestseller, says Warlock. Talk, a spellbinding triumph, says the enchanter. But just the fact that like the cover honestly gives you like Gilderoy Lockhart vibes, it's 
only appropriate, as I said, that if you're going to give a nod to Flourish and Blots, you make it Gilderoy Lockhart inspired. All right, that was the unboxing. So let's take a look at the cheat sheet and see what we got. So this is an ad for the Vile Incantum, which is like the equivalent to Borgen and Burks in Nocturne Alley. So this is the Vile Inca Incantum, Poisons and Cursed Curiosities. And finally, the next box from the Wizarding Trunk will be the forest and the grounds, which will include an item to store your creature pages. All right, so favorites and least favorites, y'all. I'm gonna have to say the book cover is one of my favorites, just because of the fact that it has that nod to Gilderoy Lockhart. I'm almost convinced that this is Dustin from the Wizarding Trunk. So someone out there, please let me know. Peter, I'm looking at you. <laughs> I also really, really loved the bank vault key. I think the size is perfect, how detailed it is, but not overly detailed. And the fact that we have the little tag that says where our vault is. And the fact that, you know, mine's next to Harry Potter's is quite great. <laughs> and then I also really like the jelly beans. I think that's so smart to actually in include real jelly beans and then a display to pull forward once the jelly beans are gone. That way you can still show it as if it's filled with jelly beans. That's just, that's just brilliant, okay? And for that, I'm gonna say this is probably my next favorite product. <laughs> so for my least favorite, that's a little tough. Um, I think it's kind of a toss up between the two or maybe it's just two in general. I do like the print like the art prints that we get in these boxes, but I'm not crazy about like the postcards that we get just because I know I don't send out postcards. And I, although this is like a really nice representation of like the different magical pets that you can get, I'm just like not, you know, crazy about it. And then the other item that I wasn't too like eh, about is this bottle. Although it serves a practical purpose, it's just something I actually won't use just because I'm kind of particular about like the bottles I use and like the pumps that I use and the fact that this was actually really tricky to like, you know, screw on here, um, kind of just wasn't like, not in my favorites. Like it's not even screwing on correctly because it won't rest properly on, uh, on the neck of the bottle. So yeah, um, for that, that, these two items are probably like, like gonna be my least favorites. That wraps up today's video. Let me know in the comments down below what you thought about this Magical Shops box. What were your favorites and least favorites? Leave a comment down below, as I said. And also, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that notification bell, that way you can see my next upload. And if you haven't done so already, consider subscribing to my channel to join my Exceptionally Ordinary family. And with all that being said and done, don't forget to tell your fellow witches, wizards, and muggle friends about Brittany's magic trunk. I will see y'all in the next video.